I've mentioned to you all that sometimes when you get into the Trump cult and you dedicate your life to being loyal to Trump and serving his ends and rooting him on, you can really get weird, <laughs> messed up, and turn into something that you'll be remembered as that's not exactly great, to say the least. Now, like I said, that's Giuliani's legacy. He had something he could have been remembered for. He was living his life based on some of his past actions, and then he leaned into his loyalty to Trump and everything fell apart. And now he's being served his <laughs> notice of indictment as 80th birthday party. Well, now I have for you a different example. A rock star, a MAGA rock star, uh, the Rolling Stone did a piece on Kid Rock. Kid Rock, of course, being this uh, musician, famous musician. And the title of this piece is How Kid Rock Went from America's Favorite hard Parting Rock Star to a MAGA Mouthpiece. The man born Bob Ritchie calls Trump his bestie and spouts right-wing talking points. Many close to him wonder what the hell happened. Now, content warning for the segment as we go through this insane interview where Bob Ritchie, Kid Rock, has a really disturbing episode of this interview. He's, as it was described, belligerent and intoxicated and dropping the N-word and just the whole thing that you're about to witness. But uh, with that being said, let's get into this. Mediate did sort of a succinct breakdown of the broader Rolling Stone piece. Here is the introduction. Musician and loyal Donald Trump supporter Kid Rock admitted in a roller coaster interview... <laughs> one way to describe it, with Rolling Stone, that he's part of the problem, adding to cultural divisions in the country. Rolling Stone's David Peisner published the lengthy chat with rock real name Robert Ritchie, which ended with uh, what the reporter described as a drunk and belligerent rock dropping the N-word. Rock said he's a polarizing figure after discussing issues like his boycott of Bud Light after the company teamed with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Tucker Carlson also made a cameo at a rock concert in April. So the other thing as we go through this that I want you to keep in mind is uh, Trump has this guy uh, proudly endorsing him and associates himself with Kid Rock. Kid Rock says they're besties. So an alleged bestie of Donald Trump is this unhinged. And just, we don't need to get sort of more examples of the low character of Trump by looking into who he associates with. He's shown us enough by himself who he is to judge him poorly, but it doesn't help that this is the type of musician that is, quote, unquote, besties with Donald Trump, the presumptive nominee for one of the two major parties in the most powerful country on the planet for president of that country. Here's a quote from Rock. I'm part of the problem. I'm one of the polarizing people. No question. Sometimes I uh, be about other people. Then I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, yeah, why don't you shut the F up too? The musician chalked it up to a rich guy issue. Isn't that wonderful? It's a rich guy issue. No Fs left. I'm not going to get it right every time or any time, but I know my heart's right. I want the best for this country. The best just doesn't include large chunks of the country that he doesn't like the lifestyle of. Pizer's journey to Rock's compound included being introduced to a white assistant named Uncle Tom. And watching Rock do a hit on Laura Ingram's Fox News show, which Rock called to tell Trump about, but the former president didn't answer. Quote, he loves to watch when I do Fox hits, Rock said. He added he wants Trump back in office because he's a fighter who cheats at golf. <laughs> okay, here's, you think I like Trump because he's a nice guy? I'm not electing the deacon of a church. That mf -er likes to win, except for when he got trounced by Joe Biden. Uh, he likes to cheat in his effing golf game. I want that guy on my team. I want the guy who goes, I'm going to fight with you. What a beautiful testimony, right? For why Trump is a strong candidate. This is what I was saying in the past second before moving on. It's so rarely about policy. What did he do in a semi on paper sense that I could objectively analyze that you find to be uh, in furtherance of the betterment of this country, right? What did he do that you think actually uplifted people, actually made people's lives better? Not, oh, he he's such a winner, even though since he won in 2016, it's just been loss after loss after loss after loss for the Republican Party, so that's not exactly right. Or he wants to win so bad that he even cheats, and I admire that. Or he's so strong and 
powerful. And I just want to give him a kiss on his big orange cheek sometimes when we hang out. Um, sorry for that that image. Moving on. Peisner described at one point an intoxicated rock ranting from one subject to the next, at one point calling another friend who doesn't pick up and referring to them as the N-word. And I'll save you from having to listen to this whole anecdote, but essentially he called this Detroit rapper and referred to him as the hardest hitting N-word in Detroit. Uh, described as drunk and belligerent indeed and rock was trying to get the author to debate with him and then at the end he said please uh write the most horrific article that you can or would you do me a favor and write the most horrific article well i don't think the author has to work very hard on that so there's your portrait of kid rock if you previously liked his music now you know this is what is up with him but i want to dive into sort of when kid rock crossed over into the political discussion a lot just to give you a sense of again the MAGA universe what it can do to your brain and you just become so obsessed with things that are not things you should be this fixated on so I want to show you a video you may have seen this before of Kid Rock after Dylan Mulvaney was sponsored by the beer company Bud Light and what he decided to do to Bud Lights <laughs> Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. Let me uh, say something to all you and be as clear and concise as possible. <laughs> Bud Light and Anheuser Busch. Have a terrific day. So, as you saw there, shooting cans of Bud Light. Like a freak. Okay, that's what a freak person does. That's crazy. Uh, and I'll remind you, if you missed this, I always find it interesting to picture someone who hasn't heard this story, so there's no context, and imagining, okay, what could Dylan Mulvaney have done? And who is she? What detail about her could possibly cause a grown man to go purchase a bunch of Bud Light to shoot it with a gun? What could do that? And then you find out that she's just a trans woman. That's, that's the whole story. Oh, did she do something horrible that made them... Nope, it was just being a trans person. That was the whole story that caused them to say, Bud Light is abandoning its principles. And incomprehensible, obviously. But again, sad to see that that can happen to you when you get so sucked in. And this falls into the category of what people refer to as culture war issues. And this is something that a lot of MAGA folks are really fixated on. And I saw this demonization of, in this example, trans people, is something that Pete Buttigieg addressed in a clip we've looked at recently very, very nicely. Then after this clip, I'll show you a really funny ending to the Kid Rock Bud Light story. But uh, here's Pete Buttigieg pointing out why it is that so many in this MAGA world and the Republican Party get so obsessed uh, with demonizing trans community or whatever other culture war issue they're obsessed with at that point in time. There, there's, a, there's a more superficial political pattern that I think has driven some of the politics of the behavior of uh, people like these people in Florida that don't say gay bill. And that is, when all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a culture war. So... You, you, you got a political faction that really doesn't have a lot of answers for many of the questions that people are wrestling with. They love talking about gas prices, but they don't have an answer on gas prices. They don't have an answer on inflation. Many of them answered uh, our call for bipartisan infrastructure uh, work with a no. Um, haven't seen an answer on what to do about the price of prescription drugs. They voted against lowering that. Don't have an answer on what to do about the cost of childcare. Um, don't have a great answer on taxes. Actually, want to raise taxes for the poor? That's a new one. I I thought I'd seen it all. Um, <laughs> then I saw Senator Scott's proposal to raise taxes for the poor. Um, that's not great territory for them to be debating on. So what do they do? They find somebody vulnerable and pick on them which at the moment is largely the trans community. And they find something to talk about which can go between the laughable, like is Donald Duck gonna make your kid gay, 
to the incredibly dark, which is the suggestion that the very presence of someone who is gender nonconforming or trans or, or gay or lesbian or otherwise different, that the very existence of somebody like that is an adult subject, right? That, that, that if, if, if my kids in, let's say, first grade classroom were to mention in passing that over the weekend they had, the, they had a great time going to, with, with their dads to the zoo, that they would have somehow, by saying that, uttered something age inappropriate and get us really fired up about that fight. So I want to be really clear on this point too, because it can get a little bit abstracted if I don't uh, concisely emphasize this. It's strange for sure, super, super strange and deranged that we've seen the obsessive tendencies of much of the MAGA movement with what is it, less than 1% of the American population. But also that doesn't take away from the importance of advocating on behalf of people and their right to be who they are and celebrating that. So it's not to pretend like that's not something that's important, but instead say, why are they fixating so much on it? It's because on so many of the issues that are widely impacting people's lives every single day, they fail on the policy. So they have to find some other issue, whatever it can be, that they feel like they can properly fearmonger on. And often that carries over into dehumanization. And uh, that's what we're seeing here with Kid Rock, at least on the Dylan Mulvaney freakout, which, by the way, as I said, there's a funny ending to this story. Then after this whole public posturing, he was caught at a concert, some event, drinking a Bud Light. So it wasn't even a principle that he was, we got to boycott it on social media. But then I guess he just can't get enough of that generic Bud Light taste. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments. But I want to have a particular question for you, okay? Which MAGA celebrity? Because now we've covered a few. I've mentioned Giuliani. Mike Lindell, Lord help us, here Kid Rock and any other you can think of. Which MAGA celebrity has lost it the most? You can tell me in the comments and make sure you're subscribed.